Good evening, everybody. This is Mike with Alpha Shark, and tonight we're going to talk about summer trading preparation. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm one of the moderators at Alpha Shark, and you can catch me there for usually about two hours a day. I'm on there. Uh, I do a morning setup stuff, and then I'm on microphone when the option the uh, option action is hot during the middle of the day. If you want to get a hold of me, you can send me an email at mikeasmartoptiontrading.com on Twitter at optionsmike. Follow me there. If you don't follow me, you should follow me. I post lots of stuff out there for free that's usually actionable. Um, not like some, you know, I don't try to post stuff after it's happened. I usually post stuff I, that's actionable out there. And on YouTube, when I put my videos live, you'll get noticed, youtube.com slash options mic. So those are the best way to follow me. 100, James, man, that's hot. Uh, yeah, I don't miss those days anymore. All right, so tonight I have a couple things for you. First, we'll do our risk disclaimer. Day trading, short-term trading, options trading, and futures trading are extremely risky undertakings. They generally are not appropriate for someone with limited capital, little or no trading experience, and or a low tolerance for risk. Never execute a trade unless you can afford to and are prepared to lose your entire investment. All trading operations involve serious risks, and you can lose your entire investment. No trades are recommendations or advice. We cannot be sued for loss of capital. All trades are for educational purposes only. Contact your broker or RIA for execution, margin, and other capital requirements. Every watch, everyone watching this presentation adheres to all disclaimers at alphashark.com and myself, Mike Pisani. Now there is a mouthful. Um, hang on, somebody's asking me for something real quick. Let me see if I can grab it. There we go. Okay, so for tonight, I ha want to go over summer trading with you guys. I uh, want to talk to you about you know what to do, what not to do, what to start to expect here as we move forward based on history, right? That doesn't mean that we're going to get that this summer, but historically we know this is what normally happens. As always, I want to go over market sentiment and some of the charts on the indexes and what I'm seeing. I want to talk about institutional flow, but I don't have much there for you this time, especially after today's action. You know, when I see action like today, it doesn't make me want to give you guys setups that I'm not sure whether they're going to work or not. And that's me. I don't want to give you guys something that I don't think looks so good or the flow there is in question. I want to talk to you about an education opportunity I have coming up for you this upcoming weekend. And as always, we're going to end with your charts. I love going over charts with you guys and showing you what I'm seeing based upon everything. So does that sound pretty good for the next hour or so? You guys excited? Are you guys half asleep like the uh, today? <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> All right. All right. Summer trading, guys. It's, it really is a different ball game, And we've kind of started seeing a glimpse of this the last month or so with, with low volume. It was very summer-esque, although summer is usually even lower. But it really is a different ball game. It's um, Usually markets aren't trending during the summer. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, so, you know, we have to think differently. We have to react differently. We have to be much more picky in what we go after. So some of the characteristics of summer trading is volume or the lack thereof. Um, it's not unusual on the SPY to end the day with under 50 million shares traded during the summer, right? Very, very low volume. We see days even less than that. And, you know, this makes it very difficult, right? Without volume, it's diff difficult to understand the moves. Algos can come in at any moment and they can whip things around. So you got to be careful. Liquidity tends to dry up. So what happens is, you know, there's less and less market makers out there now. And what happens is when volume's lighter, we have a lot less liquidity, both in stock and the just common stock and in the options market. That means you really need to be picky about what you chase after. You don't want to be going into a low traded volume name because you may have a hard time getting out, either in options or in stock. So you, you really need to think about things as, as, as volume dries up. You need to say, I'm not going to just chase everything. We've seen this a lot lately. You can see by this example of Apple from last summer, chop. 
Algos love to trade pennies in tight ranges. They'll trade them back and forth between each other all day long, and they'll make you think you're going to break out on every given little candle, but the truth is that the, the, the stock's going nowhere, and they're just happy swapping candles all day long. And you, you see this setup, especially when volume's real low. When volume really starts to drop off, you know, you're, you're, you just you try to get you and me and retail investors to chase candles. Because what happens, what happens when, when we see a candle go up and we don't have anything on it? What are we thinking? Right? You see a candle pop up and you're saying, this is it. This is the one that's going to break me out. You're bored. You have nothing on. You're looking for something to do. You chase the candle and then they pull it a minute later, right? How, how many times do you guys see that in the market right now, right? You see that all the time. And then we also get these very range-bound setups. Many equities, especially indexes, can stay in well-defined ranges. They just kind of chop around for a month, a month and a half at a time, not selling off, not going up, just moving at a very tight, narrow range. And this is the sign of a summer market where the traders aren't really paying attention and you need to really think differently. You have to kind of ignore the indexes, put them out of your mind and say, as long as they don't breach this level to the downside or I don't or go above here, I can ignore them and I can focus on where they're playing or where the action is at this time. Does that make sense to you guys? Right? Perfect. Thank you, Doyle. Thanks, Robert, right? And that's what you need to focus on here. And the summer season, guys, really starts now. Now, it really doesn't kick into after July 4th, but right now it can start. Now, today gave us in a reason to see volume and volatility, right? Today, you know, raise your hand if today was a little bit of a shocker, right? Um, last night, I know about you guys. I went to bed around a little after 11 and everything was green and rosy and everything looked wonderful woke up this morning i was like whoa what what the hell happened overnight and then we started looking for it so you know we we are now going to get into a little bit more volatility and what does this kind of remind you of from a couple years ago anybody paying attention what is this kind of starting to feel like we went through this with another european smaller country a couple summers ago Just to the south, Greece, right, Christian, right, Greece, right? Doesn't this doesn't this feel very, 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 very similar, right? Markets looking for an excuse for something that just doesn't necessarily matter hugely, but any excuse to sell and to and to bring volatility back and to take profits and, and to do things right. That's kind of what this feels like here. You know, Italy's economy is definitely bigger. Hey, I'm Italian. I love Italy. But is it a big enough to crater the markets and everything? Eh, I don't really don't think so. It's not that big. All right. So what else do we talk about when we're doing summer? What not to do? So don't chase candles, especially on short time frames. And if you have a hard time determining where support and resistance are, Put something simple indicator like I use here, the ATR trailing stop. You see that pink dots coming across? You see how every time it gets to it, it pulls? But I can't tell you how many people, and I used to do this all the time, chase into that high. And you chase into it because you think this is the time it's going to go. And if you have a little indicator up like this, it shows you that, hey, maybe I shouldn't chase here. Maybe I should wait to make sure it can absolutely break through it, right? So the first thing you want to stop doing is stop chasing candles. Try not to, especially on short time frames. You're looking at a five-minute chart. Don't chase five-minute candles unless there's huge volume. And even then, make sure it's not the middle of the day. I mean, how often do stocks move between 12 and 2 o'clock anymore, right? Most moves during that time frame tend to be fake outs, right? They're just a quick bump up or come down. Uh, everybody else can see it. So, uh, Seneca, you might want to try to reload and come back in, right? What else to do? In summertime markets, really concentrate on buying at resistance and selling at, um, I'm sorry, buying at, you don't want to buy resistance, right? You, you, you know, buy a support, sell at resistance. Algos love to get you to chase. They want to make sure everybody think everything's breaking out when the truth is nothing's breaking out. They're just trying to do it. 
Also look for option flow. You know, if they're not momentum sweeping names and you can follow me, uh, you can come into trading rooms. There's lots of people, lots of ways to get option flow. We can talk about that another one, but you know, if they're not sweeping it, chances are the name's not going to break out at that point. And don't expect big moves. Look for doubles and singles and take profits. Did you have a green day? I hope some of you guys had a green day. I had a nice green day. Ty, if you like, if you like VWAP and uh, that, feel free to use that. That works. And the point I would say to each and every one of you, it doesn't matter what you use as long as you trust and respect it. Does that make sense? Use what you like. I can show you what I do. I'm going to do a class on that, but you need to trust and respect it, right? There's a lot of different stuff out there. It doesn't really matter which one you prefer. As long as you know how to work it and how it works for that stock, you can use it. So don't expect big moves. Singles, doubles, singles, doubles, singles, doubles. And guess what? You know what will happen is that big win will come when you least expect it because you're just doing it and you get into it at the right time. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to chase candles. You don't want to buy at resistance. And you don't want to expect big moves. Great, David. Love hearing that. What to do? First thing is, if you're trading options, buy time. I try to avoid weekly options unless I'm willing to risk it all or playing for a very short scalp and I put a, a stop in place. Summers are often premium burns. We often see most of the volume in the first, what, 30 minutes to an hour of the, morning, of the day and then the last half hour or so. You guys notice that's kind of been the case now for this last month of this market, right? Almost all the volume is in the first hour and the last 30 minutes of the day. During the middle of the day, we've had this death zone, especially starting between 11 o'clock. Sometimes we get a little algo action during lunchtime where they kind of try to catch people off guard. But, you know, so buy time. If you're trading weekly options, you're asking, asking to get hit hard. It's very, very tough. I don't recommend trading weekly options all that much anyway, but if you're going to trade them, expect to lose it all. If you go in there and say, I'm going to expect to lose it all, then you, you, you go in there with the right mindset. Buy support. If there's no volume on the downway and a stock is coming into an area you define as support, it's probably nothing to worry about. It just means they're trying to push it down here. They're trying to shake out weak hands. They're trying to get out people who chased a couple candles into the highs, and now they're pulling it down, and they pull it right to support, and that's where the buyers step in. That's where the real buyers actually step in and the algos get out, right? They love to do that. They love to get people to chase into the highs, bring it back to support. They get all the weak hands out where they can buy it back cheaper. And also, more importantly, you really need to widen your playlist. Um, I do have my favorite stocks, right? Do most of you guys have favorite stocks, stocks you love to play, stocks that are your go-tos every day, right? These are the ones you're always watching, you're always looking at. But when you get into summer, they like to rotate and they really like to go into unknown names or names into the underbelly of the market, names you may not be looking at. So you need to start watching and looking for that rotation. Option flow is a great way of finding it. You know, how many times we'll see unusual option flow come up out of nowhere in a name and say, that's strange. And you see the volume coming in, you know that something is going on there and you can jump in on it for a quick trade and make some money. And that's what you really need to do is start looking for them to rotate in here uh, or they rotate into beaten up sectors. But you got to widen your watch list. If you're just watching the same five names and, you know, I love trading the beta names and, and technology names because of their movement. But. You know, there's times, especially in the summer, when those names are just out of play, right? So if, if, if your watch list is Facebook and Amazon and Google and Netflix and Tesla and Apple, and they're not in play or in NVIDIA, what do you do then, right? You know, that's, that's like a handful of stocks of a couple thousand stocks that are out there to trade. So you got to widen it out. you got to look further. you got to look deeper down. you got to see what's going on. Make sense? It sounds easy, but a lot of people won't do it, Chris. And I, I say that nicely. I mean, people people will look at this and um, they'll say, yeah, 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 but in, in practice, it's hard to do. What else to do? Play events. Earnings season starts again uh, in about, uh, oh, well, another month, right? Again, it's July, back into earnings season. 
Look for run-ups. Look for names you can play to chase up into it. Look for where the volume is. Play volume. Volume, volume, volume is the most important indicator out there in your arsenal coming into summer. When you see volume that is way higher than it normally is, you know that there's something going on and you should play where the volume is. Okay. Uh, Momentum is another thing. Sneaky option flow and news are your best friends in the summer. If you guys don't subscribe to a news service, think about it. There's some out there that are very inexpensive. I use one. Uh, I almost, you know, playing off of that, you know, news and individual stocks oftentimes will give you some of your best plays in the summertime. Remember, it's not just us. All these funds are looking for some place to go play too. So a rumor out there gets a hold, they'll run that name up. Even if the rumor's fake and they know it, they'll play that name for a pop that day and run it up. Uh, Stan, are the best days still Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? So I think it really depends on what you're looking for, Stan. I usually find that Mondays and Tuesdays tend to be a little bit of option flow premium days. They like to get people on Mondays to chase weekly options and then to, to, to basically start premium them out so they're in trouble when they come into Wednesdays. I find Wednesdays to be great. I usually do well on Tuesdays. Today was a good day for me. Um, I love Thursdays. And Fridays, I'm a little hit and miss on. Fridays can be good. But for me, Fridays are also now with options expiration every week a little bit choppier. Uh, some good news sites. You can use Benzinger. There's uh, the Trader Exchange is another one that's very inexpensive, and they're pretty good as well, Mitchell. Okay. Uh, so like uh, a rumor. You can play a rumor like um, sell, you know, a company getting bought, sell gene getting bought out or sell gene or an activist investor. Sometimes these things will get things started. Jana taking a stake in X. You know, this stuff comes out and you look for the option flow around it. And if they keep the, the, the way to play that is if they keep buying the options after the rumor, that usually means they're going to play it. That's one of the things I am. I am always looking for. Uh, I look overall volume, Robert. So it's not just the spike. You want to, you know, you usually get a spike. You want to see the spike and then them just stay with it. And the volume st stays elevated. It doesn't have to stay as high. You see an elevated volume. Right? Makes sense? Right? So you get that initial spike where they come into it and then you want to see them stay with it. So in other words, you may get a, you know, a drop back, but you want to see it higher than normal. If you're looking at a five minute chart, you want to see it to stay up there. See them staying with it. I find the 200 day is still support. We'll go into that in a minute. So again, play events, play volume, play momentum. These are your friends in the summer. This is from last summer, Hershey. Unusual buyer came into this name, followed by a rumor. And this was a quick trade. You know, I was in and out of this thing in, in 10 minutes, but it was a nice trade. And there's things you can do to do with that. Uh, uh, again, Benzinger is a good one. Uh, the Trader Exchange is the one I like. I use them. And then there's another one out there. Uh, you can use the Fly, depending on what you want to pay. They're all different prices and different stuff. So take a look at what you like. All right. So different ideas. So, again, for summer, guys, easy on the stuff. You trade smaller. Buy time on your options. Buy at support. Don't chase candles. Play momentum. Play volume okay that's that's how you got to play summer if you're doing the opposite of that you're asking to get in a lot of pain make sense you guys with me i go over this every summer with you guys because everybody kind of forgets it all right any questions before we move on okay so let's go over what's happening in the market now and sentiment you know, we've seen a rapid chilling in sentiment here in this market. And we really, really have. So a couple of things I look at on a daily basis. First of all, CNN, this stuff is all free. What I'm showing you here is everything is here. Oh, Carrie, is there, is there a tool which shows you high option action on all stocks? Uh, I, you know, you can use Trade Alert, which is a, a tool, but it's just pricey. Um, that's what I use and I at, at this point and I look at. So you can follow people that use that that have a service like me, or you can do it yourself, or you can create your own scanners out there using Thinkorswim or some of the other uh, um, platforms out there, but they don't work as well as Trade Alert, in my my personal opinion, Karen. So CNN Fear and Greed X, everything I'm going to show you here is free. 
So we went from a week ago, we were over 59. Um, I think actually going into that, we were almost 70 at one point, not too long, like a, like, a, like eight days ago. And look at how quick we cooled down to 31 here. And this is good, right? This this is good if, you, if you're a bullish investor and you're looking for something. As sediment comes gets too bearish, you know they want to reverse and, and change things out. So this is as of today, 5.03 p.m. You can see that there. So this is updated. This is current. So this is good. This this tells us that, you know, greed is coming out, fear is coming in, and that usually gives us something to go on. Um, sentiment here. I always look at this. This is from Stock Twitch. You type in the symbol. The interesting thing to me here is the SPY is sitting at 55%, and it's been steady now for a little bit. We're not cooling off rapidly here on the SPY, which is interesting to me because usually retail sentiment, which would be all of us, right? We're all retail people. Uh, and most of us here anyway are not uh, institutional investors, is usually the first thing to dive. You can see on the queues, it's just dripping down at 65%. Now, I've seen the SPY up at 70%. I've seen the queues up over 80%. So these are pretty low numbers here. They can go lower. But what's real interesting to me is the IWM is rising again, back to 60%. And if you guys aren't paying attention, the IWM is telling us what this market's doing. For the last month, it's been telling you what this market's doing and that they are really playing with um, small uh, with the small caps here in this at this time. Oscillators, stockcharts.com, free. I look at this not every day, most days. I have an intraday one I use during the day, so I know if something's going on. But here you have to look at this. We went, you know, here we are today after the close. We went from a couple days ago, getting close to that magic, you know, 200, we're up at 120. We're now negative again, negative 14. You know, you can see negative 200 is when we usually get a big type sell. Here at this point, we are heading quickly in the right direction. And this is what we want to see. We want to see the oscillators come in and set up for a nice buy signal. You know, for me, a perfect setup tomorrow would be a red open and then a reversal at that point. Kevin is asking, as a technical trader, if I notice volumes coming in with the chart is setting up for a run, however, the option volume is low. Uh, Kevin, it, no, if the option volume is low and, the, and there's volume coming in the stock, they just may not be buying it. There may be somebody come in is not playing options or it may be not a liquid name and they just don't trade a lot of options in the name. So if there's volume coming in and technically it looks good, I'll play that as well. I don't just, uh, but the, for me, the best situation is when I get the technical setup and the option flow at the same time. That to me is like two things, right? I have two reasons to get in there following the volume. So anyway, the NIMOT, this this is the new, um, New York Stock Exchange oscillator came in nicely. The NASDAQ's holding up better, still plus 25, but come way off its highs. So, you know, you got to love this kind of action. This little bit of pull in the last two days has really softened up the oscillators. It really is creating room to go back to the upside, which is something we want to see. Back in February and March, Every time we um, every time we got we, we bounced, we got hot quickly on a small bounce and then we would, you know, we'd have a lot of room to sell off. So we're starting to change back to selling off quicker now and not getting as hot on the bounces. That means the market's trying to stabilize here to me. That's a pretty good sign. All right. Spy channel break. Last night I was very bullish on charts when I just when I, when I just went through and we looked at a bunch of charts. So this morning we open up, we gap down, and we clearly break that 270 area of this channel that we developed. The SPY was acting really nice, guys, right? We had um, we had ridden the, the eight day for uh, pretty much almost two weeks until Friday when we had our first close below it. We were starting to look a lot better. We had de defined resistance at 274, and we had defined support down around the 100 day and then the 270 area, and we clearly broke that today. We got this move down. There was good volume in the markets today. We did about 100 million shares. And the problem I have right now when I look at this chart is we're kind of in la-la land, right? There's just, 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 there's not much here. We broke the 8, the 21, the 100 day. We're not to the 50 day. The 200 day is all the way down at 263. There's no clear good signal here for a reversal or anything. We came in well off the lows into the close, but we had a big gap as well. So the SPY here is kind of in no man's land. It's not really sure where it wants to go. And 
I would have shorted it today, except there were so many good stocks performing good through all this that I didn't feel like I really just wanted to jump in front and get short, and I found ways to make money. So the SPY here, 50 days, my next target, 266.85. The door's open to that. We can't hold there. Then you look for the 200-day at 263.24. That has been support every time we've hit it. So at this point, until it breaks, you have to assume that's a place to try start taking some buys and for some longs if we come to that. At the same time, we, if we, you know, tomorrow the news out of Italy is not as bad as we thought and the market rebounds and we get back above 270, you're back into that channel with no damage done and you look to play the strong names. All right, so that's how you have to look at the SPY. RSI, which was starting to move up again, coming back in, lost the 50 area, okay, but we had two nice double tags. So again, if RSI gets to 30, you get to 200 at the same time, that has been a great indication to go long in this market. The VIX, you know, for the last uh, month, everybody's been talking, oh, look at the VIX bouncing during this. And the last month, the VIX has done nothing. Now, today, today was a candle. Today was a day when you have to take note and say, we went from 13 on Friday's close, a little over that, and we went to almost 19. We just missed it. That was a big move in the VIX. That was telling me that there's definitely fear out there and there's things to be aware of and to be concerned. So we popped out of the Bollinger Band. Most of the time when we do that, we tend to come back in and revert back in. We'll see if this is the case here. You know, is this a case where we're going to blow out of it and get a huge move up again like we did back in February? Or is this just another one of those we quickly bounce out and come back in like we've seen multiple, multiple times through the last year in this thing? Um, I have no position on it. I will tell you this tomorrow. If we look like we're going to sell off, the VXX moved huge today, and that would be something I would be looking to play tomorrow from a day trade perspective, uh, trading in the 30s at this point. I think it's trading around 39 for a high today. The Qs, uh, they've been acting better, but big test, right? We came back into that, that resistance area a little over 170, around 170.50, Touched it, couldn't break through a couple times, but we're still holding the eight day. So whereas the SPY got beat up hard, right? The Qs are still kind of holding in here, guys. So, and if you notice today, what names had strength today? What names were good today? Who was paying attention out there? Who was playing today with me? Tesla was strong. Yep, Micron, another good one. What else? There was a bunch of them. Amazon, thank you. Chips, yep, chips were strong. AMAT, Netflix, well, Netflix was and then sold off. Facebook held in very well today. Two other names I'm thinking of here. AOI was good, but yep, I'm thinking of two other names specifically, not Micron, I already said that. Square, there you go. What other one? Twitter, Twitter, thank you, Vinit, Twitter. Twitter was very good today, right? So we had some strength in these names today, even though the market was weak telling us these are all names that had great charts one of the things except for except for tesla almost all the names you mentioned here had one thing going into today right if you noticed last night when i posted charts they all had strong looking charts they're all kind of looking to go keep that in mind all right so the cues here still looking stronger still leading iwm this thing has been incredibly strong so today We've came back and retested where we broke out from, and we held it and got back almost to the eight day. Pretty impressive in this name. Uh, I'm going to do charts when this is over, Kevin. Ask me then. Okay, we'll go, we're almost done. Um, in fact, I'll use that one first. So IWM has been leading. Okay, got a little extended up at 163. If we hold 160, this would be incredibly bullish for this index and small caps. When you get above and you break out of a long channel, which we did, and you come back and you test and hold that breakout area, that is incredibly bullish. That's telling you that there's strength and there's power there. Make sense? All right. So keep your eyes on that because if the IWM rolls over, probably the rest of the market's going to go. It's been a great indicator of which the way the market's going to go each day. So keep your eyes on it. The SPY, by the way, has been the weakest. All right. Questions so far. Sentiment. We got that. Institutional flow. 
usually guys I put a ton of stuff up here I got to be honest with you after today and what the flow has been like the last week I am not in love with most of the flow other than momentum and short term stuff here so if you're looking to swing trade stuff I am not seeing a ton of stuff that I love the one I still like and I talked about this earlier this month and I'm back in it again is micron and the reason I'm not sorry not micron MGM and the reason I like MGM is because they keep coming for it. So last week they came screaming for the June 22nd 30 calls. They're still sitting in all those August calls they bought. And, you know, the fact that they keep coming for this name and the fact that it's holding here above the recent range low, it's waiting. Again, if you look what's going on right now, we have a potential strike in Vegas. And if that doesn't happen, I think all the casinos bounce, bounce. I think MGM tries to get going. And this is a name I think that if the rest of the casinos go, it's not going to get left behind. So keep an eye on it. Something to do. Before, for me to really want to get heavily long this name, though, it's got to take out the 21 day, right? The 21 day has kind of become its, its tough spot for it. So until it can break above, let's call 32, I'm watching it. Breaks above and closes over that area. I have a lot of interest in that. Also, look how tight the Bollinger Bands are getting. When the Bollinger Bands get tight, we're setting up for what? Talk about this every webinar. What are we setting up for? Not as, okay. A squeeze, a big move, a big move. I don't like using the word breakout, guys, because it can be a breakdown. Expansion, better word. It could be a breakdown. When the Bollinger Bands get really tight, you're setting up for a big move one way or the other, and now you just have to find out which way it is and wait for that move. You, if, you, if you only think breakout, you could be in trouble, right? You could be wrong. What if it's a breakdown? You could do a straddle. You could do a straddle, Chris. Or you can wait for confirmation. Or you can buy on dips like down here for and see if it goes back to the top in the Bollinger Band and have something in play with a profit margin so you can put a nice stop in place. A breakout, okay, breakout means up or down. To me, a breakout is a move to the upside. Breakdown is uh, what I would use. So, David, I hear you. Okay. So, take that all out. I have a special educational offering. Then we're going to move on to your charts. And we have about 25 minutes to go, plenty of time for charts. I want to go over this with you. So, day trading off option flow. So I'm doing a special course uh, going over technicals and how to use option flow to trade and do day trading. You know, we talk about this all the time. Option flating is a great, unusual option trading is a great tool, but these guys are often wrong. What I like to do is look for the right technical setup with the right names and then find ways to go in and make money off of it, especially day trading. And, you know, day trading is where I always look to get involved with a good technical name and come in on it. And one of the reasons today I had a very green day, I had three trades to the long side, all of them were green out and took the risk down because the option flow told me to hold and play there at that point. So great example here, Roku. Last Thursday, uh, buyers came running, flooding in early into Roku. This is a five minute chart. You can see the first five minute candle. Look at the volume spike on it that we had at that point. We haven't seen volume in that name like that in a long time, all right? Call buyers have been non-existent in this name since earnings. Haven't been there. So this action just stuck out like a sore thumb. So after the first five minutes, you still had a, almost a $2 move to be had in the stock if you just wanted to day trade it. You could have stayed long um, from above 37 to 38.50, gotten stopped out at 38.50, and had very, very little risk on and just inched your stop up all day long. And this came in because of the option flow, option flow volume. And technically on a daily chart, it was a great spot. The stock wasn't trying to break out. This was a spot where you looked at the stock and said, they're coming for this in a big way. And what I like, and these are the setups I do every day. Setups like this today had me making money in um, Square and Baba and in Twitter today. Right? Same type of thing. Great setups, option flow, and the volume came in and got me in and also showed me where to get out and to move on. And that's what I look to do on a daily basis. I love to swing trade, and this one actually worked as a swing trade because if you held it, the next morning, Roku flow came in early on the open again that morning. You could get in below the close on the day before and look at the size of the day two candle on this thing. 
It was no overnight risk. You could enter back in the first five minutes for a huge day. And again, look at the volume on those two days on a daily chart, telling you they were playing here in this name. They were playing big time. You know, at that point, you should be just about done and out of the stock. And I'll tell you why you should be out on Friday. You know, even though it got an upgrade this morning, look at the move today, right? Technically, there was no reason to touch this name today. Tomorrow, maybe, but today there was no reason to look at Roku. Unless you were looking for a cute short, I don't know about you guys, I don't tend to do cute shorts on strong names. I'd rather look for names that look weaker. This makes sense? Uh, Kevin, when I'm day trading, I use common stock a lot of time. That's one of the things I'm going to go over. Would I use my webinar? I use options. Sometimes I use weeklies, but most of the time I will still go out and buy time. They don't decay as fast. They don't get whipped around as fast. But sometimes I will. Depends upon what I'm looking at. Depends what they're going into. And I'm going to go over all that in the webinar. So in this in this course, I'm going to teach you guys how to use option flow technicals to do day trading. And you can use, also use this for swinging. We're going to identify. We're going to go over how to identify momentum flow in a name. You know what names they want to play how to take a quick look and make a determination to stocks in a good spot. You know, is it too far up or too far down at that point? Are you chasing already too far of a move? And this is not a good spot to start a position, but wait for it to cool off on a five or a 15 or a 30 minute chart. I'm going to go over volume and what it means, but volume, 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 guys, when you day trade is the most important thing to look at. Once you have the setup, once you have the flow, it'll be very telling what you should do. I'll go over with you how to set up your intraday charts like I do, which makes it very easy to trade, identify support and resistance, and show you places you should be okay pulling back to or where you should be getting out of the stock. Uh, we'll go over the types of option flow here, what we look for in repeat flow, and the type of repeat action we want to see keep coming into the name to keep us in it throughout that day, and where we put our stop losses on the initial option activity, even on there, and where we should start taking profits, and when there's a time to let things run overnight. And we'll go into all that. Okay, so if this is something that interests you, I don't do stuff like this very often. Usually I do private mentoring. I'm offering a one-time course. This course will be on this Saturday, June 2nd, from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern. Okay, we'll be a following-up mentoring session on the 16th for half an hour. So any questions you guys may have, you can come in, and I will be happy to go over them with you at that point. And this is all for just $99. Andrew from Alpha Shark is offering his high-low thinkorswim indicator for $499 value for free for part of this. So he wants people to be real good. So I'm going to send this to all of you, uh, the link. If you're interested, sign up. If you have questions, reach out to me. It's only $99, two and a half hours of teaching. You guys will learn a tremendous amount. This is an exceptional opportunity. I hope you guys all join me for this. All right, with that said, anybody have any questions on the course I'm offering and what I'm going to be doing here? Uh, Kurt, no, I don't trade futures at all. Sorry. Deborah, Baba gave a reversal candle today, uh, which is why I, I got out of it for a profit. I sold um, early this morning, took my profits, and got out. Don, I'm talking about uh, stock volume. Um, option volume, I love to keep saying that they're still coming for it, but it's the stock volume. Remember, options don't move without the stock moving. So I'm looking at the volume on the stock. Kerry, uh, I trade a lot of times common stock off of option flow. And uh, people who are in my service, you'll tell you all the time, um, nonstop taking uh, options, taking 1,000 shares or 500 shares or 200 shares on option flow and trading it for, for a win. So no, you don't have to trade options. Um, and if you're interested in option beginner class, reach out to me. I have one I do offer and I can teach you all about it. Uh, I do not cover how to find unusual option activity in TOS DPAC. Uh, I don't use TOS as a scanner for that. Uh, I can show you what to look for there. We can go over a little bit, but that's a whole separate type of thing. The indicator is the thinkorswim high lows indicator from uh, Alpha Shark, so it's included for free. Uh, Alex, I will record them and they will be resent out to people who signed up. 
Yep, it will be recorded and will be emailed out to people um, upon uh, uh, afterwards. Everybody who signed up will get the recording. I really uh, encourage you guys all to be there, though, because if you're there, you get to ask questions live and interact with me, especially the second class, right, which is really for you guys to answer questions and go over things. Uh, I, uh, John, what I use is I follow, the, it's not necessarily any of them. I use all of those or, or none of them. I basically look at names I like that look strong and I look for the volume and the option flow to confirm it and look to take them for, for a ride, John. It's kind of different. You're welcome, right? All those work, but really I'm looking for the best setups. I'm looking where can I make money today. I love to swing trade guys but the market hasn't been kind to swing traders. That's the link to sign up. Um, hopefully it worked, unless I mistyped it, which you guys know I'm a horrible typist. Nope, it works. Yep, that is the link to sign up, so take a look at it. All right, I'll give you the link one more time at the end, but for now, unless you guys have more questions, this is the next part is I like to go over your charts, guys, things you want me to take a look at. Uh, it's $99, so you're going to have to put some type of credit card in. It's a $99 course, Arthur, which I think is really fair for two and a half hours. That's an incredible deal. Um, I don't think, you know, you can't ask for much more than that. I don't do these often. I usually charge uh, considerably more when I do it on a private basis. I'd like to do it all for you guys as a course. All right, let me pull up my um, stock charts here. Sorry, pulling this up. All right, my screen back up. There we go. All right, guys, we'll start with you. I know PayPal was the first one you guys wanted to take a look at. Um, I had a great trade on PayPal. I definitely left it too early. I did swing trade PayPal. By the way, when I traded PayPal, does anybody know how far out in time I was? October. This was about two weeks ago. October. All right. So PayPal, um, it continues to see decent flow. We had a big move, right? If you look at this from the 200-day all the way up, it broke above this trend line and it's holding the 8-day. To me, it's a name that's on my list to go to if we remain. The market doesn't continue to sell off. I like the look of it. You have resistance up just shy of 84. It's called 83.90, okay? So recognize that. So as long as we continue to flag here right now, it looks good. It, to me, it looks like it's digesting a very big move. Analysts had that meeting. They came out very positive. I love the look of PayPal here. I have no current position. Flow continues to remain strong in it, but not enough to make me want to get back involved given the price action of the stock here. Make sense? All right, what else we have? Uh, Micron, love me some Micron. Uh, if I wasn't so busy in the other names today, I would have grabbed Micron, guys. There was huge momentum flow into Micron today. So when you ask me about this, you right now, real quick, come in here, a couple of things. One, you have a double top, right? Real easy to see. You have a double top. You could even say right here, right? Look at the closes a little. Nope, all right, we'll use this one. You've got a double top area right now. It's a little extended, right? You have an open gap. It's a little extended off the eight day. The flow remains incredibly good in this name. RSI is getting heated. It can go a little bit more. It could use a couple days of sideways action before you guys we get back into it. If you want to day trade it on momentum, it's great. If you're looking to swing trade it, I would prefer to look for this thing to pull back a little bit and let the eight day catch up. It's had a huge run. All right, great name though, best in breed right now in that market. Spot. Guys, I don't know about this one. Spot had some nice flow. Uh, I think it was last week. Let's see if I can find it. And it didn't do anything with it. I, I don't know. Um, when I look at Spot, guys, I would love to be a lot more excited about it here. I can't get overly excited about it here. It's acting okay. It's holding in well. Um, I held the eight day into the close kind of. And you don't have a lot of history here. So for me, for me, I need to see something more come into it. Volume has been very, very light in this name at this point since these couple of days. Uh, I'd rather see them come after it. It's not telling me much here other than it's still digesting and going sideways. 
FCX. You know, um, I've been looking at this name. We haven't seen much flow into it. Today was a nasty candle. Ugly, ugly hammer down today. Closed on the lows on a 21 day. Uh, I would see if it can hold the 200 day around 1643 before I try to get into it. It's not showing me any reason to be long it here. So I'm not, it's not on my radar. I keep watching for flow. There's not much coming into that name at this point. Uh, let's do Baba. Somebody was asking me about Baba just now. Remember that. I do want to talk about Baba today. Okay, Baba, real simple. You have this partially open gap that has never been filled here. Okay. You can see it tempt, touched it today, but it did not get all that far into it. We have a reversal reversal candle today, right? We tried to go, we reversed, we closed almost on the lows, but still held the eight day. What I what worries me about this name here is it can't get going. You know, this is multiple tries now. You got a lot of what they call high tails, right? And by high tail, look at all these candles where it pushed, couldn't go, and it came back down on daily. As long as it can hold the eight day, I remain interested in this or any kind of reversal candle coming into tomorrow. But right now, I'm out of it again. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see. That type of candle to me is not the type of candle I want to see today. That was a little bit of a uh, candle that has me a little bit concerned here at this point. Hey, James, how are you? Um, so I'm in the yellow. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Sorry. My uh, screen just jumped. Why did this jump? There we go. All right. Uh, BA, right? CL. CL. CL as in CL the stock. Colgate, yes. Uh, yeah, we have been seeing buying in this name. Uh, they keep coming after it. Definitely trying to form a rounding bottom here and back above the 21-day holding here. Uh, for me, though, the problem is the market has to hold up here. So, Melissa, if you like the name, this is a name they came into. They came into a bunch of the staples last week. So Colgate has been one of them. The reason I didn't post flow on this here because it had a big move. The flow came in. It already popped nicely off of it. And even the little bit of buying into here hasn't been all that much. I'd rather hold off for now until it finds something else. Boeing. Where's Boeing, 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 Boeing? There we go. Boeing had an ugly candle today. This name was looking good like it wanted to go. Has lost the eight day. We filled this gap. For me at this point, let's see if we can hold that 345 area. Maybe try it on a reversal candle off of that area here. It's been acting great. Lots of lots of uh, good sentiment into it, but not really getting any kind of activity yet. So we'll keep waiting here for that one to uh, find some time in it. The call buying is evaporated in it. So just let you know. Devin had a huge move, energy name. What I loved about energy today is the energy section did not care what was going on in the marketplace today. Uh, held the 21 day, right? This is the type of action you like. Multi-day, four-day pullback into the 21 day and held it. Held it the first day, held it again today. Nice move off of it. No new call buying into it today that I picked up on. It still looks good. I'm looking to start dip buying energy. Nev, I would stick with the strong names here. So if you're looking for strong names in energy, they've been MRO, Will, Devin is another one, COP in that sector as well. Those are the type of names that I've been liking there. Doyle, JP Morgan, I don't know. Um, and this is where you have to ask yourself on the banks. They have been wrong about these nonstops. A week and a half ago, last week, we saw incredible buying like we haven't seen forever in the banks. And it all failed, right? And you have this Italian thing going on, and we do not yet know how much contagion, you know, how much that's going to be contagion, contagion that's going to be to the banks, what their exposure is. That said, out of the Bollinger Band today, try to revert back in, way extended to the downside. I would be looking tomorrow for some type of short-term bounce on J.P. Morgan here. See how far it is off the eight-day? Banks don't do that very often. When they do, they usually snap back. Here's your 200 day. That would be your next area to look for a buying signal on it. Um, for whatever reason right now, they don't want the bank. So I'm being very, 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 very careful. Deborah, I think I answered your Baba. We did JP Morgan. So right now the banks are all on my 
caution list here. They're just not acting particularly well. Qualcomm went ex-dividend today, guys, uh, just so you guys know that. And as we're sitting here today, you got a reversal candle in that process. And, you know, here we are. Um, back to the eight day. This is an engulfing reversal candle today. I would wait and to see what they do with the name here. After a big move, this is not the end of the world, right? RSI got heated. We came up. If we can hold the 200 day and go sideways, I'd feel pretty good about trying Qualcomm again to the long side. Uh, Apple today actually held in okay. I got to admit, uh, Apple, if you look on a daily chart, chopped around, but it managed to hold the eight day into the close and it closed strong. That in a weak market today is pretty impressive to me. This name still looks like it's digesting as long as it can hold this range, right? So really, as long as we can stay above 186, this name stays in play for me for a move higher. Okay. That said, if we lose that, the 21 days next, and then you lose that, you got a big void, right? Other thing to look at is here, this candle right here, 182, let's call it 182.90 area, right? That's where you broke out from. Anywhere in this area would be a place from 182 to 182.90 to hold on Apple if we come in. Does that help you guys there? Coke, how much time we got left? Plenty of time. Coke, uh, another name that came after. Pepsi had, by the way, unusual buying late today into weeklies, not something you see very often. See, they were going defensive today. So when the markets get concerned, they tend to go the first things to defensive names. So like your Cokes, like your Pepsis of the world. Nice move today. Uh, top of the Bollinger Band, retreated right from that. I don't see a lot here at the moment. But there was no flow, but something I'd keep an eye on. This sector just hasn't been performing well. I, to me, it's a day trade. I'm not looking to swing it here. That's just me right now. It hasn't been performing well enough for me. Google today was on my short list, Stan. Uh, one of my ideas from this morning, I put out a video, if you guys didn't know, every morning for my service, was if you want to go short, was to short Google this morning. Uh, I didn't do it because I was too busy long with Baba and Square and Twitter. Honest answer, I just didn't have time to look there or play it. But um, to me, Google has not been acting special. It is chopping around, it, you know, one day up, one day down, all over, back into the bottom of this range here, right, back to this 1066-ish area. I don't know. Uh, to me, if the market's weak, this thing, easy date with the 200-day again, Stan, at this point. If the market's strong, I just think there's better names to play from the long side right now. There's a lot of names out there that look better than Google, and uh, so I'd rather look there. JD, John, the reason I didn't talk to you guys about JD, all the institutional flow, and they were buying the August 39s today, because JD had a buyout rumor last week on that big, big range candle here, right? You can see it. And for me, until this thing can get above the 21 day, I am not, not interested in it, right? You see the 21 day is a wall on this stock right now. So until that happens, John, I'm just, I'm avoiding it. Um, it's just not ready. You know, a good volume today. They bought a ton of the August 39 calls. It couldn't go anywhere on that. They've been buying tons of option flow ever since that um, rumor day. It means they believe it. Uh, by the way, I think the rumor was Tencent. Tencent is supposedly putting a bid in for uh, JD. Uh, so if you know, I think they were in the news the other day. They bought, uh, they brought a gaming company. I think it was Grinding Gear Games, a small private company, just to put that in perspective. Uh, they are a big investment house. So I'd be careful with that name here right now until it can get going. By the way, nobody talked about, um, nobody talked today about the new uh, sanctions against China. Nobody cared. Wasn't even the news. Isn't that funny? The new, the new tariffs. Oracle uh, software names have been a tough name. They've been out of play. CRM had a good report tonight and is up. If CRM can get traction, maybe Oracle can try to go, but Oracle, Adobe, uh, uh, Take-Two, all these names have been kind of beaten up lately. They're out of play. Nothing going on here for me right now. I'm not really looking in this in this sector, to be honest with you. Uh, Square. Square is one of my favorite guys. Love Square. Continue to love Square. They continue to buying in the June 55s, the July 60s, the August 60 calls. Tried to break out today, closed well, holding. I sold my calls today into the pop. I can buy them back tomorrow. The reason I got out of them today was because a couple times now I've gotten very green and let it pull back, and I decided that I wasn't going to let that happen again today. Tomorrow morning I come in, 
one thing I loved about it, nice volume on this. This chart is a beautiful looking chart. They've been buying every dip on this thing, continues to look well, and again, needs to get above here and we're into blue sky. So close over 58, blue sky break, guys. Got to love that. Uh, Baidu, nothing going on in Baidu, Robert. I already looked at that today. I'll give you guys a quick look there. We don't have that much time left. But quickly on Baidu, uh, you know, bear flag formation right now for me, guys. There's been call buying in it. They've been buying in August. It's not reacting well to it. Right now, you have to look at this as a bear flag, right? Here's your pull down. Here's your flag. And until this changes, I'm not interested until I change the character. Right now, it's clinging to the 200-day. So that's a, you know that that's a little bit bullish there. OKTA, OKTA, I don't know who that is. Ah, nice move. Nice look. Um, I've never touched this name. Thank you for pointing it out, Elizabeth. Appreciate it. Don't know anything about him. Beautiful move. I wouldn't be chasing this up here though. All right, if you're up, I'd move your stops up. I wouldn't chase. Uh, the nice thing about this name, it's really buy every dip to the eight days being bought. So if you're not in it today here, Elizabeth, I'd look for a dip to the eight day to try it again. NVIDIA, NVIDIA tried today and couldn't go, guys. Uh, it still is having huge issues with 250. I keep watching it. It's not there. If you're looking for a name I'd like to play tomorrow, it's AMAT. Into that gap, nice move today on volume. Look how strong this name was in the face of a weak market today. Okay, so when you're looking for stronger names to play, that is something I would look at in the chip space, right? See how it stands out? You're looking for stuff like that. Uh, what else? We're just about out of time. I'm going to do what else we got? Momo. Uh, Momo had great earnings. Close, strong, really strong all day. China name up here, right into resistance. I wouldn't be buying it here. I'd look for a little consolidation. Look at RSI here. Yep, I'm going to go over the class again for you guys right now. Thank you, Don, uh, and I appreciate you guys all coming in today. All right, so what I'm going to be doing is on Saturday from 1 to 3 o'clock Eastern, we're doing a class. We're going to be going over how to trade, day trade on unusual option flow and using technical setups and how, what to look for and volume. And I'm going to show you how I set up my screen, right, what I do in there, how I identify momentum, how I set up my screens, what I look for, how I identify little simple indicators I use that are free to identify support and resistance to tell me where to get in and out of trades and different ways I trade it, how I trade unusual flow and day trade with options, how I trade with common. And I do trade with common a lot, guys, especially in a market like this where I don't have to worry about volatility drops on the options. So all this I do, we'll go over all this as a two-hour course. We have two weeks after that, a half an hour follow-up to go over any questions you guys may have had from the course. Right, so the first time is this Saturday, then a two hour, half an hour follow up. Two and a half hours, $99. Also, AK threw in his TOS high low indicator for $4.99 for free. Uh, I really look forward to you guys being there. I hope you guys sign up. And if you like it, I have other courses I do. I do a lot of mentoring one on one guys, and I'm going to start doing some more of this stuff uh, in courses like this where you can get in cheaper and get a lot of the same stuff. So I'm going to send you all the link again. It can be used on this. Yeah, of course it can be used on the SPY or SPX. It can be used on anything. It's only, uh, Robert, unfortunately, it's not for trade stations. It's only for TOS. Guys, I appreciate you all joining me tonight. Um, watch the markets carefully. Keep, yep, I'm an alpha, I am an al a moderator for Alpha Shark, Melissa. I just thought you didn't get it. Let's try it again. There you go. Keep an eye on the IWM tomorrow, guys. IWM has been a great, great indicator for what is going on in the markets and what they're doing. If the IWM remains strong, I wouldn't worry too much about what's going on and, you know, go from there. Have a great night. Be safe. Remember, summer's coming. I'm going to record this. I'm going to repost it on my Twitter site at Options Mike so you guys can watch it again. Have a wonderful evening, guys. Thanks for joining me, and I'll catch you guys all shortly.